Hello techies. Welcome to Microsoft Power Automate Desktop Tutorials. In this module, we will learn two actions. First one, insert column to Excel worksheet. The second one, insert row to Excel worksheet. Before going to work with these two actions, I will start with the use case. If you see on my screen, I'm having an Excel with the columns name, email, status, and date of joining. Now, I want to add one more column over here in between of status and date of joining. So how can I go ahead and do that? There, I'm going to use insert column to Excel worksheet action to add a new column in between. But over here, if I go ahead and I will use that one, I can't give any kind of names for the columns that we have to keep in our mind when you are going to work with insert column to Excel worksheet. All right, now there is one more action that I want to add a row over here. Let us assume I want to add a row in between uh, fourth and fifth rows in between. I have to add a one more row. How can I go ahead and do that? There is an action called insert row to Excel worksheet is the action which we are going to use to add a row in between the rows. All right, first of all, we'll see how to insert a column into the Excel. Okay, so first of all, to open an Excel, what is the action that we'll use it? Launch Excel. Let's expand Excel actions, and there you will find Launch Excel. Let me drag and drop Launch Excel onto the workspace. And there we're going to select the parameter Launch Excel as open the following document. Because of we're going to insert a column which are already existing right now as part of this module, right? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the path over here by clicking on the uh, you know file browser. Let me select the employee details Excel file and then I'm going to click on open. Now, as we know the remaining parameters, we don't want to bother about that. But over here, if you see only a open as read only, we have to keep it as false because of we are going to be modify this one. If we enable this one, what will happen? We can't edit the Excel. But right now we are going to insert a column into the existing Excel so that we'll make it as false, the parameter open as read only as false. Now, as a second step, we want to insert a column, right? Insert a column to Excel worksheet where we can find that action. Under Excel, under advanced, you will find that action. Let's expand the advanced under the Excel and there you will find insert row to Excel worksheet, insert column to Excel worksheet. Now our point is that we are just going to be adding a column. Let me drag and drop this insert column action to the workspace. Let me drag and drop. And now if you see the select parameters, it is asking Excel instance, which is already we have created the flow variable by using launch Excel. The same parameter I'm going to use or the flow variable, I'm going to use it over here. Now, in between which columns that I want to add a column? If you see over here that I want between C and D. So I can say over here D, in between D, it, if I'm going to insert a new column, it will come as a D, right? Now I'm going to give the column name or column as D over here and then I'm going to save it. Now what I'm going to do, I have launched an Excel, inserted the column. Now I want to close the Excel by just drag and drop this close Excel onto the workspace. Let's drag and drop and then I'm the same, you know, what are the select parameters that we are going to take it? Excel instance, the previous instance flow variable that I'm going to use it. And after that, before closing an Excel, which one do we want to select? I want to save the document, right? So that I will save the document which has been opened as part of launch Excel, right? Now I'm going to select the parameter before closing Excel. I'm going to select the property, save document. Now let me go ahead, let me save it. Now our flow is ready. Now I'm going to save the flow by clicking on Control S. Save flow, Excel Automation 3 saved successfully. Click on OK. Now, before going to run this flow, if we, the Excel has been opened, please close that Excel. Okay, all right, now I have already opened this. Let me go ahead, let me close this. All right, before running this flow, 
I want to know that the flow has been executed successfully or not after the completion of the run. How can I go ahead and know that? So to know that one, I'm going to add a message box over here after the completion of these steps so that I will get to know, okay, this entire flow has been successfully completed and then I will go ahead and I will do the remaining actions. All right, how can we go ahead and we will display that message box over here. So in actions, we are having a message over here, display message. If you search with message, you will get display message. Let's drag and drop this display message action onto the workspace. And there you are having lot of parameters. One is message box title. I will say process completed. Okay, this is the title or else I will simply say process. Okay, now the message box to display that process completed successfully. This both are different. The title is like that you will get it display message. This is the title we will get it and the message box to display in that box or message box we will show what kind of message that is the nothing but process completed successfully. And if you see the message box icon, we are having multiple icons over here. If you see one is information, question, warning, error, and none. If this message box is related to information, then we're going to use information. If it's a question kind of thing, then we'll use question. If it is the error or the warning based on the respective things, we'll select these kind of options. Now, I'm just going to display the information, right? So that I will select information over here. All right. Now we'll see about the another proper, another parameter that is message box icons. Let us assume if I'm having a message box like yes or no, with the with the question and answers and then you know based on the polling kind of thing at that time we'll use buttons over here if you see over here i'm having okay cancel yes or no yes no cancel abort retry ignore retry cancel but over here i'm just going to display the information so that i'm not going to use any other option just i'm going to use okay button to display in the message box and the there is the default button. So if I'm having multiple buttons when I'm selected message box, which one is the default button over here? The first button, second button, or the third button. So because of if you see over here, I'm having more, I'm having three buttons over here, about rate, try, ignore in the same way default button also having, you can see over here, first button or second button or third button. Right now only by default, I'm having only one button so that I will select first button only. All right. now. Keep message box always on the top. It is nothing but if I'm having 10 pop-ups or 10 windows from always on the top, I have to show this one. In that case, I will make it true. Uh, in that case, what it will do, it will be showing always on the top. All right. Now, close message box automatically. What does this mean? This means it's nothing but after some time, if I'm not going to click any kind of button, by default, after some time, it will go ahead and it will close automatically when you enable this, uh, when you are enable this parameter. So what will happen if you see timeout within three seconds or how much time it is required to close it immediately so that, that the default value is three seconds over here so that it will close automatically after three seconds. All right, now I will show you one more thing over here. You can see variable produce under that you will have the flow variable as button press. So in future that we want to know, have you clicked on yes or no or about retry, whatever the button you have clicked on that I want to know so that based on that, I have to make some more actions on the top of that one. So that at the time I will store the value of the button in the button press variable so that you will use the message box for the later part of the actions. Right now, we're not going to be concentrating on this button press. Let me go ahead, let me click on save. Now, my flow is ready. Before running this flow, if you, any Excel related to this launch Excel, if you're having that Excel has been open, please close it. Because of while at the time of closing an Excel, it want to save the data. But so it will, this close action will be saved when you have closed the work cell only. All right, now let me go ahead, let me run the flow. Now the flow execution has started. 
it has inserted the column so you can see in the excel that we have been opened very fastly and then you can see automatically before going to closing the uh, message box also it has been closed automatically because of we have given the display over here in a such a way to close it after three seconds all right now now go to the excel employee that let's open the employee now if you see over here the column a new column has been inserted in between c and d e, which is the column is d with the no values now we will see how to insert a row to excel worksheet so before that what i'm going to do i'm going to disable this action over here because of i'm not going to use any insert column so that what i'm going to do i'm going to disable this action now what i'm going to do i'm going to insert a row to excel worksheet where i can find that under excel under advanced you will find insert row to excel worksheet let me drag and drop this action onto my workspace between the launch excel and the close excel now we will see the parameters for the insert row to excel worksheet you can see the parameters we are having existing instance that is same instance which you have used for the long excel and the row index so it will start from one two three and so on so now i want to add a row index at three okay so that what will happen in between it will be starts uh, over there it will be adding a new row now let me go ahead let me save it now let me run the flow flow execution started and if you see in the excel we have given row index as three that is one two three over here you can find the index three over there it has been added a new row okay all right my process has been executed successfully let me click on OK. I hope you understand how to work with insert column to Excel worksheet as well as insert row to Excel worksheet as part of this module. Thank you for watching Power Automate Desktop Tutorials. If you have any queries related to this concept, please post them in the comment section. I will see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye. Have a nice day.